Hi, my name is Jason Hammond and I'm the director of The Devil's Box. And I'm Beth Jasper, I'm the producer of The Devil's Box. So I guess uh, one of the main questions we are asked is how we got into this. Um, one of my occupations is as an art director in motion pictures and um, that really entails doing a lot of scavenger hunting and I had to come up with three catfish for a motion picture we were doing for a guy to catch out of a river. And I could not find live fish anywhere. Uh, I went as far as to try to bribe a couple of people at the uh, La Fiesta in Austin to sell me some live catfish. And they, I guess they thought I was with the Parks Department or something, but they wouldn't do it. So I uh, went home uh, in a panic, got on the internet, and found a little fish hatchery in Hallettsville, Texas. And I called up, and this guy answers the phone, and I asked him if he's got fish. And he said, sure, we've got fish. And I said, would you have big catfish? He goes, the biggest as big as you can handle come on down all right so i came down got a big 65 gallon ice chest uh filled it with water and got there and he had these fish ready and it was just killing him why uh i wanted just wanted three fish because he's used to selling thousands of fish um so i didn't tell him why i needed these fish and it was killing him he d he just couldn't understand why i just wanted three really big catfish and and usually i don't tell people what i'm doing because it you know they'll start you know my son's got a screenplay and all this other stuff and you know you just don't want to get into those conversations but as i was walking out i said well i need the fish we're making a movie he goes making a movie you need to make a movie about my fiddle contest i'm like what's a fiddle contest and so he sat there and briefly explained that he helped with two other men found the Texas State Fiddle Championship in Hallettsville. This is news to me. I'd never even, I didn't know there was such a thing as a fiddle contest. And so I was trying to get out of there. I was like, okay, sure, sure, sure. Here's my card. You give me a call. And we'll talk about your fiddle contest. And I didn't think anything else of it. And a month later, phone rings and it's him. It's Kenneth Henneke on the phone. And uh, it says, wants to have Beth and I down there and talk about uh, the fiddle contest and, and have a meeting. So we go down there and show up and his wife Annie has cooked us pot roast and potatoes and carrots and fresh iced tea. And we sit down with him and, the, and Stuart Fryer and they tell us all about their fiddle contest and, and one thing led to another and the next state championship that following uh, April we were down there and started making the devil's box. The fiddle contest was in April and um, we had just gotten enough money together about two days before the contest to, to be able to get a couple of camera guys and, um, to, and an editor to come down to, the, to Hellettsville. And uh, we had absolutely no idea what to expect. They told us nothing about what a fiddle contest was and it was three days long. Um, so we kind of guessed and um, got an idea from the program of who was playing when and we just started shooting with four cameras and it ended and we hoped that we had everything that we needed. We had chosen some people to interview uh, and then they had given us a list of a few names to interview, fiddlers to interview. And um, again, we had no idea what the story was. We had no idea what the fiddle contest meant. You know, we had no perspective on that. We didn't know anything about music, neither Jason nor I. Um, I got kicked out of uh, the violin class in the fourth grade. So I'm very non-musical. Uh, and um, we thought while we were doing it, we're the wrong people to do this because we don't know anything about music, let alone fiddles. And then we realized, well, we're the perfect people to do it because the people who watch it won't know anything about fiddling either. So, um, so we shot everything. And, um, and, and left Hallettsville and went into the editing room to see what we had and um, realized that we had discovered a story and a piece of history that was amazing, really, and that these people, these fiddlers, had their own world. And I think uh, as soon as the contest had ended, one thing that kind of struck both Beth and I was that this thing was really culturally significant. This is something that, that even though this music started in other countries, was brought here from Europe, basically, um, 
this is something that's very unique to America. Um, and we saw multi-generations at this fiddle contest, from the very young to the very old, um, all together, you know, interacting. They weren't playing video games, they weren't on their cell phones, they were talking with each other, they were playing music with each other. The older folks were teaching the younger folks how to play, teaching them songs that their parents and grandparents had taught them. And it, it really, it became evident right off the bat that uh, this was some this was a story that needed to be told. You know, it's a small story, but it's a very important story, and I think that it's a story that many many people will relate to. Um, this these songs that they were learning, um, the, none of these songs had ever been written down until really the last year or two, and um, all of the fiddlers learned by ear. Um, they sat knee to knee, what they call knee to knee, one here, one here, and um, they watched they watched the older person play the fiddle. And that's how they learned. They heard it, they watched, that's it. There's no music. And um, that to me was just amazing. And the other thing about um, this contest style fiddling, which is called Texas style fiddling, is that you only hear it at contests. And there are fiddle contests all over the world, so um, or all over the country. So you can go to California or Oregon or Kentucky and all over Texas, certainly, and you can go to a fiddle contest and hear these songs that you'll never hear played like that anywhere else. And it's really, it's amazing. It is. Well, we felt that this uh, story had great cultural significance. Um, you know, this is an art form that has that was brought here and by the pioneers of our country uh, was developed in farmhouses and around dinner tables all across America. Um, it brings in a, a mixture of cultures and there really hasn't been a lot done about it. There hasn't been a major documentary or a, a long form documentary done. Um, and we feel that it's very significant that, you know, we got the opportunity to do it and we're very happy to have done it. I think the most difficult thing about making a documentary is knowing when to stop. <laughs> you, can, you can continue shooting and every, every shoot will open up some other avenue that you could explore that you could go down and, okay, well, well, now we need to interview this person because they came up in the story that Johnny Gimbel told us, and so let's go and talk to them, and then that person leads us to another person. So while you can start out the process by saying, okay, our documentary is going to be about this, it's not going to end up being about that. It's going to end up being something completely different, or at least different than what your preconceived um, ideas were. Uh, you know having no knowledge beforehand about what a fiddle contest entailed or what the fiddle community entailed, you know, we really went into this blind. And like Beth said, you know, generally you have a script, which is your blueprint, and you compartmentalize that and break it into sections and you go and shoot it all, and then it's done, and then you edit it and it's finished, and you may have a couple little pickup shots here or there. Documentary, we shot over 400 hours of footage, you know, trying to boil that down to an hour, you know, 86 minutes in essence was very difficult. We could not have done it without the help of all the fiddlers in the fiddle community. Stuart Fryer, Kenneth Henneke down in, in Hallisville. Um, Stuart really pointed us to who we needed to talk to and, and who were the movers and shakers in the Texas fiddle community and in the, in the national fiddle community as well. I think that um, you can't do a documentary without the help of all kinds of people and the fiddlers and their families and their fans were so kind to us and we stayed in their houses and they answered questions and they gave us their pictures to use and um, we we will just be always be grateful to them for that and um, it really is their film it's not our film it's really their film it's the fiddlers film